I figured out what to do with that black plastic crap. You know what I'm talking about. That Panasonic that we stole the motor out of. I think I may have found a use for it. So let's check out what my brainstorming has led to. So you guys remember this piece of crap, right? Um, I was trying to think what this might be actually useful for. I mean, after all, it does have a turntable that the, the uh, tonum weighs about 12 grams. Well, maybe I'm getting carried away there, but it's heavy. I thought, what uh, possible use could I have for one of these things? Not much, except I do have a collection of uh, 78 RPM records that was given to me. And I don't have a turntable that can play it. I thought, possibly, maybe, this thing could be made to go 78. So I'm going to open this up and just play with the 45 RPM adjustment and see whether this thing will actually go 78. Maybe it'll go fast enough. We can try playing a 78 record on this thing and see how it uh, how it sounds. As I say, I 78 records are old. I was given a bunch of boxes of LPs and everything and one of the boxes is full of old 78s and I have no idea what's on it I mean this stuff's gonna be like a hundred years old but I thought you know it might be kind of cool if I could get this thing to play these old 78 records it might be kind of cool to be able to just to sit down and, and see what music was like a hundred years ago because that was long before my time I remember my grandmother had a bunch of 78 records in fact I've still got them and I got a whole shelf full of them somewhere in a trunk somewhere here and uh, haven't been able to play them now I know that the music that she was into was opera and I'm not really into opera but it'd be interesting to see if some of these other 78s have some old good jazz on it and that would be right up my alley so let's see if we can get this thing to play 78 the speed control is in the bottom there's two pots one for 33 one for 45 use my little RPM indicator on my phone and see whether we can speed this thing up that'll save it from the recycler if it will go that fast speed adjustments like on this little circuit board right down there we'll just remove the circuit board to make it easy to adjust out of the unit I think the whole thing will just lift out and the wires are probably long enough that I can uh, maybe not but I should be able to adjust them. I should be able to turn these controls. Yeah, yeah, I should be able to turn these controls. I'll have to reach in from the bottom to turn them, but I should be able to reach in and turn them with the thing operating off the edge of the bench. Oh, well, let's just see whether the uh, adjustment will, will turn this up fast gotta find the control. I'm gonna go to 52. We need to go faster than that. Let's see if we can get that speed cranked up just a bit more. Okay, the uh, 45 control, which I've turned up all the way, I have basically turned it to minimum. I think that's minimum resistance. The meter will tell me if I'm on minimum resistance or maximum. Let's measure it. I'm sure I'm on minimum. But there's another resistor in series. Let's see here. This is the control, and I've got it cranked all the way to yeah, 3 ohms. So it's at minimum. So there is another resistor that's in series with that control, which goes down to the switch. So that resistor is right here, and that resistor is... Like 250 ohms. Let's eliminate that resistor. I'll just jumper it. And that should put this thing into uh, turbo drive mode. We'll see how fast it goes and whether we can bring it down to 
to 78 and see whether this thing will, will actually do it. So we'll just get some good old, I think the power is off on this, it better be off, the power is off. Uh, I'm just going to just put some solder over this resistor kind of bridge it together if I can. I may have to put a piece of wire in there. This is quite a distance to bridge. Yeah, I'm going to have to put some wire. I have to put a piece of wire across there to short that one out. You can just hear people screaming right now. Keyboard experts will be like, you can't do that. Of course I can. I can do anything I want. This thing may have a second lease on life when I'm done. Okay, so that... That should make this thing go much faster. Let's just give it full power. Crank her up. Crank her up, as they say. Let's, uh, let's see how fast the sucker goes now. Oh. Shut up, phone. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Uh, I think we're going a little fast. Let me just put something on there to stop my phone from being catapulted off of the... Okay, how fast are we going to go this time? 120! Uh, I, think, I, think, I think we can maybe slow this down a bit now. Ah, uh, this might be working. The 33 one still runs 33. Cool. <laughs> Let's uh, get that speed control and crank it back and see what happens. Oh boy, look at that. Seventy-eight RPM. I'm gonna go get a record and play it. What do you guys think? So this is an old seventy-eight here that I have. This is an old uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. Where's the phono? I think this is Sinatra. Yeah, Frank Sinatra. This is the only one I've got in the shop here. I kind of just keep this up on the wall. Yeah, I'm curious. How is this gonna play? Actually, not bad at all, I might say. Not bad at all. <laughs> now, obviously, I can't let this play because I, I will pull a copyright strike immediately. But I'll put it on just for like a few seconds here. The quality is actually not bad. Listen to this. That is amazing for this old unit to play 78 RPM records. I just want to see if it picks up at the end of the record. It should, at the very end here. Oh, come on. I, I put it over a little too close. Let's we'll see how whether it'll go all the way to the end. I may have to adjust it. I'm pretty happy with my my little idea here. I'm gonna have to go get those other boxes of records and and just see what I've got because it was just a neighborhood band. can adjust the base and treble.
let's see what other goodies I got. I got a, this came as a, out of an estate that, uh, I had a whole pile of records, like boxes, some LPs, and then some 78s. Look, they're in really good shape, too. This is, uh, more than likely opera. Nice click, 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 click. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> but yeah, this this is gonna be old opera records, but hey, it plays pretty good. What year would this be? I'm just looking to see here. Made in Canada by RCA Victor Corporation. Does it say what year? This is in French. Duh. And I don't see a year on this. There might be on the actual, the actual album itself. Let's just take a look at the album. This is how record albums used to come. You got like three records or four records, two sides each. This is what an album came as. And you open it up and there'll be some cover information. This is from 1913. Wow. Interesting stuff. I don't have to go through and listen to all these old records. This is one here that I and I know I know this guy because my grandmother used to listen to this. He's a he's a, he's a tenor, James Melton. And uh, I've got boxes of his old stuff that was my grandmother's and it could very well have the same stuff because uh, I'm sure everybody had the same uh, the same records play 78 rpm records just fine and now I gotta go dig through some of those 78s this is just the first couple I pulled out of this box I don't know whether there's anything else in there but I'm gonna certainly go and, and go through them and see what there is but this little black plastic crap record player now has a second lease on life as well as I say we you know recycle and reuse this thing can now play 78 rpm records how cool is that now 78s came in both 10 inch and 12 inch for the longer recordings you got it on a 12 inch record it's still one song just a couple minutes longer of recording time And this one, this is an EP. It has two tracks. And the second track is over here. This is like this is like a, a bloody time capsule. We've been able to look back at, at this old music. That uh, you know that I'm looking to see where this was manufactured. There's bass in English, but is there a date? This is this is uh, from the UK. This is from the Gramophone Company. His master's voice. Yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, 
That's kind of cool. I got a bunch of these singles. I'm just going to go through them and see what I've got. Of course, this is RCA Records, right? His master voice. And the thing with these records is they're they're so darn fragile that you just have to look at them the wrong way and they will break. They are very fragile, but it'll be uh, interesting to see what exactly I have. Opera. This one's a really short song. A real long lead out on this one. Side eight. This must have been part of an album, I guess. Side seven and side eight. I just have the single. Some of these you bought them in a book. As I say, I, I got a lot of these. I had a full box, at least of uh, 78. Most of the stuff that I, I got in this, uh, it came out of an estate and I was just given to me. It was just like, here, you want some you want some vinyl records? And I said, sure, I'll take some vinyl records. I didn't know that I was getting a bunch of, of you know, pre-World War One records as well. Enough of that. You can tell the records that have a lot of play because these old Bakelite records, they wore out relatively quickly. So someone who's played a record a lot, they get kind of noisy after a while. So this is a DECA record and I like the warning on the back. This record contained in this envelope is sold under the express condition that it will not be broadcast on radio. Okay, we'll broadcast it on YouTube. Columbia Records, exclusive artist. Finally, one that's an instrumental. Check out this record. Look at how thick this one is. So, like this is thicker than a normal 78. This is a really heavy record. Hmm. Another Columbia. This is a 12 inch. This is really old, this one. And noisy. Now a lot of this noise. Is, well, the record itself is it's probably fairly worn. I don't even know that this would play all the way to the end. 
because it, this one's really actually recorded. I'll have to disable that auto stop if I wanted to play this. But it looks like the uh, the groove just comes to an end. There's no, there's not even any lead out groove. It just stops. This is one heavy, heavy record and very noisy as you can hear. Now a lot of that noise is the uh, oh home sweet home. I thought I recognized that. But very 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 old. I don't know what year this one is either. Does it say? 19, 1901, 1902, 1909. These are the patents. Read the conditions for sale here. It says that it may not be resold in the U.S. for less than the price printed on the record. Three dollars. That's a lot of money back then. I don't know if it tells me what year that this was recorded or released. Looks like the copyright on here is, is, is 1908, 1909. What does it say there? 1906. You got to remember back then the average wage for a man would have been about uh, probably 35 bucks a month and a woman maybe $20 a month. $3. Wow. Look at the price. Price $3. $3 for a record that in 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 that year in like 19 well 1909 or 1904 whenever this was recorded. It's got a November uh, 1909 for a patent on it, but three dollars for a record back in that year this is just such a neat old these records are just kind of cool you know for from a, a collectible standpoint these records are oh look at this one this is a this is a one-sider this is called a single the other side is blank you can see the cracks in here these records are so fragile that to you just have to look at them. What is this? Hmm. Farewell, my son, I am dying. Act 4. This must have been an opera. Check the label. Manufactured in Canada from Victor Talking Machine Co.'s Matraces. Is there a date on this one? Two dollars and twenty-five cents. This is uh, this is quite the collection that I was given. I mean, I'll never listen to this stuff other than right now, but uh, just the whole the whole fact that this is so old. Oh, there's another one here that's another single single sided record right right here. This other one, this next one, it's also a single sided record. This is so ridiculous I had to go back and re-edit this because I played a few clips that were like 15 seconds long and I got hit with copyright. This is total bullshit. This one costs $3.50. And people complain about how much it costs to download something off iTunes now. And another single. I think these are all singles. Wow. This one looks like it's got some damage. It's just a crack. On the back side of it looks, yeah, you can see. You can see there's a crack right there in this record. Again, they were pretty they were pretty heavy. Look at the label on this one here. Uh, this is from 1916. Two dollars. Price on this one's two dollars. You know, okay, nineteen sixteen. That was a lot of money. You know, that was like Play one more. 
that I've got here, and then we'll, we'll close this up. I mean, I got boxes of these things, but I'm not going to play them all. I got a, I got a full box. I, I got one full box. I think one one or two full boxes of 78s. Anyway, I kept this this video going on a lot longer. I, I originally intended just to to modify this thing to play 78s, and I didn't realize I'd be playing all these records for you. And uh, we'll see whether I pull copyright strikes on these. I'm not going to play the whole record, but we'll see. I, I, they shouldn't. Just because of the age of this, uh, these records, any copyright that was on them should have expired a long time ago. Because these records are like 100 years old, right? So there, I, I wouldn't think that there'd be any copyright on this. I didn't play the Bing Crosby one, which is I had earlier, because, well, Bing Crosby, you know, yeah, it's iffy. I don't know when it was recorded, but it may still... It may still have copyright on it, but I don't think these ones, because these are a lot older, I don't think these ones would. Anyway, I just figured I would give this black plastic piece of crap one more chance to be useful. And now it is useful to play these old 78 records. At least until I see what I've got on them. Because there's a good chance that what I'm done listening to these records I'm not going to hang on to them there's a good chance I'll pass them on to another collector and uh, let them go to someone who, who wants to archive this stuff but we'll see I'm still hoping that there's you know some Louis Armstrong or Miles Davis or you know any of the, the big band stuff Glenn Miller and Count Basie and stuff I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to find some 78s of that era of music because that would be a keeper for me the opera stuff forget it i'm not into opera but i am into jazz so if i find some old jazz i'm hanging on to that and i may end up just having to hang on to this to play them anyway thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye